right, so the first thing I'm going to do is prepare my slip. So one of the tips is to use um, an immersion blender if you don't have like any fancy tools. And so I have this old one from my house that I brought. And I have some um, clay that I left in water before I went um, home. And then it sat here for like a week because of the winter weather. So I'm just going to see how this goes, trying to mix it up with my immersion blender. So it seems to be working pretty well. I can see this clay breaking up. Um, I don't need this too thick because I'm going to use this for uh, my paper resist and one of the suggestions was not to have it as thick as you do when you're doing like slip designs. Um, so I'm just going to mix it a little bit more and then I'll be ready to use it on my um, design. So I have a brush I'm going to use to apply the slip anyway so I might as well get it in there and I can stir this around and see how it's doing. And I do find some clumps that aren't mixed in yet at the bottom so I'm going to mix it a little bit more. And I'm actually doing the opposite um, of what I saw in the video this week. Um, the example that I saw had terracotta clay base and then um, white, slip, white clay slip on top. And I'm going to do the opposite. I mean mine white clay. And I am doing this terracotta slip on top. So this is a pretty good consistency. It's still pretty liquidy, but it's a lot thicker than when I started. So I think that's ready to use. So I'm going to rinse off my tool because I don't want dry clay um, on the metal because that can be corrosive. And um, then I will start getting ready to do my paper with this. Alright, so here I have my slump mold. And before I dip my papers in water, I'm actually going to lay them out and kind of see where I think I want them. And that way then I can put them in the water afterwards and put them on there not to worry about if I got them in the right place because I spent time cutting out each of these little designs and I don't want to get them in the wrong place and then tear them trying to pick them up. Um, I decided to go with the Poyeta theme again because um, I really had fun working with that last time. So I've cut out all of these different shapes in that design and um, so I'm going to kind of get an idea for where I want them. I cut different sizes and um, shapes because I wasn't sure kind of where I would want to put them. Um, so I'm pretty sure I have more than I need, which is great. I'm thinking about where I want the different flowers to be and which sizes are best. Um, so. So I'm thinking something like that. I want them to go off the edge. I'm going to do a different treatment on the outside of the slit mold for contrast. Um, so that's ready for there. So the next step will be to dip these in water and get them stuck onto my clay. Alright, so I'm going to start dipping my papers into my water and then adding them to my slit mold of a clay tray here. So just taking these and dipping them in the water and then laying them where I want them. Oops, carefully. Now obviously not getting these all exactly where I want them, but by having these pieces down it's still helping me um, plan my shape here. I want to make sure these are stuck down really well. So that when I start adding the slip, it doesn't seep underneath the papers um, and mess up the design that way. Some of these pieces aren't wanting to stay down. Um, they're drying really fast, I guess, or maybe I didn't get them wet enough, but I also don't want them to tear. So what I'm actually doing is um, taking my finger and dipping it in the water and then just patting them down like that um, to make sure that they are nice and stuck down. I'm going to 
try try some different things here to get these sticks down well. So I have to be really careful, especially where the mold is at an angle that these pieces are down so that ah, try that one. <laughs> so that the slip doesn't get into them when I'm doing that. So just trying to double check everything, make sure I don't leave any holes for the slip to get in. Alright, now for the slip. So I have my brush here. I have these brushes for stuff that I don't care what happens to them. So like this one, I've used it for anything before. I've used it for paper mache, for clay. Um, then I have my liquid slip. And then one of the suggestions is to dab instead of like traditional painting so that you don't have streaks. And I think also this helps make sure you don't accidentally pull up your paper and get the slip underneath it. So go like that. Alright, so now I'm just going in and making sure I haven't missed any spots, especially along the edges, but being careful not to pull up the paper by accident because I see some spots where it's wanting to happen as I go over them. Um, also kind of looking for spaces that maybe are a little bumpy and I need to smooth out. One of the things you don't want to do is try to pull up the papers too soon before um, the slip is dry because then it might seep into your design. I was a little worried that I might not be able to see my design, but one of the good things is since I have paper going off most of the edges, I can start to pull up from there and it'll help me find my design. But I even find that as the slip is drying, I can see like the indentation of the paper in certain spots, so it's going to also help me find it. Alright, so this is, I think, ready to dry, so I'm going to let it dry um, and then I will pull up the paper afterwards. Because um, again, don't pull up the paper too soon because then um, this slip can seep into the edges. Um, post recommended, actually if you have like, you know, elementary where you don't see them for weeks, just leave them out and let them dry for a week and then they can pull them up the next class. Um, so I don't think I'll need to wait that long, but it's good to know that I don't have to rush back to this. I can let it set and come pull these up when it's dry. Alright, so there you Alright, I have my slump mold here and it's pretty dry so I'm going to start peeling up the pieces. I'm going to start with the ones that I can just grab from the edge um, and then if I have any smaller pieces I can use a needle tool or push pen to pull them up. Um, so I'm just going kind of slowly making sure that I don't pull up things I don't want to. I do have a little bit of seepage and I think I can clean those up with a ribbon tool if I want. Um, so we'll see how the rest look and then decide. I think if I did this with my students, I'd probably have them use construction paper. Um, I used printer paper and it tears pretty easily and I think they would get frustrated. Um, but that may be something for me to play with and see if it would be easier for them if they did that. Alright, these um, underglazes I ordered came in, so I got this uh, Maker Fundamentals underglaze that I'm going to use on the um, downside of my slunt mold here um, for my tray. And I also got these designer liners in um, and these can be applied to clay, bisque, or over other glazes. So I'm going to try them um, to add some little details. I thought green and red and brown would be really good because it's really natural kind of floral which is the design here. So these are the tools that I'm going to be using to finish out my slump mold. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint the bottom of this. Um, 
with this glaze, give it a few coats. One of the things I always tell students is to change the direction of their brush strokes as they go to make sure that they get all the little spaces filled in. So that's what I'm doing here, trying to go horizontal, vertical, diagonal, even on a curve in some spots, just trying to make sure that all the space gets filled in. Alright, that is done, so I'm going to dry a second and then I'm going to do um, the designer liner, so I'm going to go ahead and get that ready now. Well, it looks like these come with a cap and a tip and a little needle um, to keep it from clogging. So it says if you are going to use this frequently to use the metal tip, on there with the little needle tool and if not to replace the cap and rinse this really well. So that's probably what I'm going to do. So I don't anticipate using these very often. Um, all right, so this is ready. I'm going to do a little test spot over here to make sure it's working. Nice. All right, so I've done a few um, touch-ups and now I'm going to use my liner. And my idea was just to add uh, some slip trailing dots just to kind of add some accents. So I'm adding these um, little dots with this Mako liner um, onto different parts of the terracotta clay just to kind of add like a little design detail create some flow and some movement, um, some extra pattern making and texture here. And then when this is all dry, um, it'll be ready for the kiln and I'll fire it to um, 06. And then um, when it comes back out, I have some clear glaze that I'll use. There we go, that is ready to dry. And um, I know that I'm not going to use this in a while, so I'm going to go ahead and clean out this tip and put the white cap back on. There you go.